Hi everyone, in this video I'll be showing you how you can work with meshes a bit more intelligently to create your Chroma 3D definitions with shells. In a previous video I've shown you how you can convert a symbol surface into a mesh plane and bring this into Chroma 3D as a shell element. Here you can see we can take a quad mesh, basically what I've generated here using the mesh surface, which has 25 faces and 36 vertices and convert this into a shell element using the mesh to shell component which would then create our shell element. The shell element now has actually 50 triangles because this component will automatically triangulate any quad meshes inside your geometry. The number of vertices remains the same here. One key thing to note, especially when you're working with geometries which are sort of smaller or minute, is the limit distance input. This allows you to control basically the tolerance of your input geometry, meaning that any points within our mesh, in this case, that is within a 0 0.005 meter distance from each other, will automatically be snapped together and removed from our mesh. So here, if I now plug in this slider, which is set to 0 0.3, and I activate my preview of my points, you see what happens if I increase this slider, that the number of faces in my setup will start to decrease, and I have less vertices. Because this means that now, points within a 90 centimeter threshold of each other will automatically be snapped together and the and any of these duplicate points will be removed from our geometry. So take care when working with smaller geometries. And you might sometimes wonder why my points or your points might be missing from a particular ge shell geometry. The next part, I'm going to show you the mesh VREPS component, which is a very, very useful component that's found in the utilities tab of Kuramba, just listed here. This allows you to take any boundary representation, a BREP, meaning it could be a surface, it could be any closed or open BREP, and convert it into a mesh. Any surfaces which are joined together will automatically be integrated as basically joints in your system, meaning that these edges, as you see, for example, in this uh, preview, they will share the same edges as well as the same vertices. So I've plugged now these two BREPs into my mesh BREPs component, and now I have a list of BREPs. It will automatically explode our BREPs into the separate faces, but making sure that all of our vertices and mesh edges are aligning if they should be. And this is key when we're working with, for example, meshes or shells which are joined together. If I now use a slider and control the mesh resolution, I can actually increase or decrease the resolution of our mesh. So in this case, the units are set to meters. So now our mesh resolution is approximately 2.18 meters. And so mean that we have points with which uh, are approximately 2.18 meters away from each other. And you can decrease and increase this setting to smoothen or make your mesh more coarse. Just make a note, when you decrease your mesh resolution, meaning that you have a higher number of mesh faces and vertices in your mesh, it, does, it can actually slow down the calculation time of your model. So beware when you actually decrease the mesh resolution. In this third part of this video, I'll show you how you can actually integrate multiple surfaces which should be connected together, as well as beam elements into your Chroma 3D model. Here I have a horizontal plane as well as a vertical plane which are collected here in my surface components. And I have a curve which is, for example, a column. And this curve should be connected to this plate at that point. I'm bringing these two surfaces into the mesh BREPS component, which allows me to basically create the mesh of both of these individual uh, surfaces. 
making sure that if these are really connected, that they actually share the mesh edges as well as the mesh vertices, as you can see as follows. When I assign a beam element that should be connected to my shell here, I have to make sure that the end point or the intersection point of my beam is actually a vertex on my actual mesh. In this case, I've extracted the end point of our curve, which we can see here, and I've included it as my inclusion points. And now, if I was now to take this curve geometry and move it around in my Rhino space, you'll see that it adapts to the position of my line. Similarly, if I was to take this surface and adjust the position, you'll also see that my mesh of my top plate is also adjusting accordingly. And so you can be sure that now, when I calculate this model, that Karamba will recognize that this mesh is connected to my vertical mesh at these basic points there. There are some additional features in the mesh VREPS component that allow you to add a bit more refinement to our mesh. So for example, the edge refinement factor, which allows you to control the basically the refinement of our edge, as you can see, which is set to 0.01. .01. Or if you want it to be more refined, then you can increase it to 1, for example, when you get more even sort of edges. Here we're able to control the point reduction, meaning that as a default, it's set to false. And if you activate it, basically any points that could be removed in our mesh will then be removed. And you see that our mesh basically it tries to adjust to this setting once you apply it there. It might be a very, very minor setting that you might not notice sometimes in our uh, geometry. When we have more complex meshes, you might see more of a difference in our mesh output. And we're also able to control this smoothing, for example. So increasing the smoothing, meaning that your mesh faces would have more equilateral, basically, edges or equidistant edges, as you see when I adjust this. And you can also increase or decrease the smoothing iteration. So those are just a couple of different features that you can control in the mesh VREPS component. So now we have our two separate meshes created. I'm bringing this into Karamba by using the mesh shell component. And I'm defining a identity or an ID for our individual meshes, in this case, shell A and shell B. The beam element needs to be defined using the line to beam component. And both of these are assembled in our assembly model. Now, if we go to the model view, we can use the shell view to extract the meshes of our shell and the beam view to extract the profiles of our beam. If we look at the output of our mesh, it's going to be one single welded mesh, which is basically joined together. Because we define an ID initially, we can also use the IDs to separate the different meshes if we want to for our model view and our shell view as well. And so that's it for the short sort of introduction into working with meshes in Karma 3D. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.